That's my, my voice. Oh, lovely, yeah. Get one from the guys. Just a quick round. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yahoo. Yeah. Ta, 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 ti, ti, ta. Uh, Richard, so when, you are, when you're on deaf, you are coming in on a shadow. What, over there? Yeah, you can see that? Yes, I am. Nice. Okay. It's just in the corner so of the frame. That's out. That's, that's in. Yeah. Running? We are running. Right then. Uh, the first thing, I, I heard that you were surprised when you heard that Repeater wanted to speak to you. Is that true? Surprised? Yeah. Excited, because it's one of our favorite television shows whenever we Rapido. come into, into the UK. That's good to hear. It's, it's just, it's part of the um, jet lag ordeal. Yeah. It always seems to be on the, the night that we get into town. And you can't sleep, and it's pretty much the only thing worth watching. So and, you know, we're like watching um, International Snooker. It's better than snooker. And then Rapido comes on and we jump up and down. Yeah, Rapido, Rapido. Is there anything like that that could compare in America that talks about music? Um, that Ed Sullivan it? Show, <laughs> um, American Bandstand, um, MTV. There's nothing that has the variety of Rapido and the quality. All right. So things... First reason why I, I, I wanted to film you in a hotel room is that because that's where that's your home for most of the year. Well, a lot of the time, this is your home, yeah. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the reason yeah. why I wanted to be here, right now. Well, then I think I'll just pull up the pillow and go to sleep. <laughs> Good night.
Good night. Now the things going. <laughs> yeah, things going real, real, real quick, isn't it? Yeah, I mean the record's only been out for what two months or something? Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a blur. I think it's been about three months now. Has it September twenty fourth. Yeah, that's right. October, November. Two months. Just two months. Oh well. That's your perception of time and reality is obviously distorted. Because it is. I mean, an album, an album to go of. Not a first album, an album to go, str you know, in the in the, in the Billboard chart, in the top chart, and number four. That's really quick. That's as quick as you can get, isn't it? I've never paid attention to charts before. Yeah. You know, I mean, the numbers just just a bunch of statistics, really. I want to have my chart done, astrological chart, <laughs> so we can like our next release or like my personal life. I'll go like my chart says. You know, I'm in Taurus, and you know, Saturn is in. Sagittarius and a look and blue diamonds and <laughs> green clovers, <laughs> orange stars, orange stars and but blue diamonds. And blue diamonds. But I'm sure if you even if you don't look at the numbers, somebody else is is looking for you at the numbers. And I'm sure, like, I mean, here everybody to Rapido talks to you. A lot of people are talking to you, want to talk to you. When you're gonna go back in America, it's gonna be the same, you know. Like a number four album is a very big album. And then people are going to want to talk to have your opinion about everything. Mm -hmm. It's already happening. Hmm. Yeah, we have our opinions. <laughs> We're a bunch of opinionated jerks. Let me tell you something. Jerky. Jerky. That's it's right. difficult to have an opinion about everything when you ask. <coughs> it's difficult to have an opinion about everything because I don't know anything about anything. Well, I think mean you give your opinion to somebody and it's just your opinion. I mean... It's not gospel or anything. All opinions are open to dialogue and forum. So do you call that do you call that pressure already? What you know, being being shot up, being shooting up at the top of pressure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. We don't really pay enough attention. To I mean, it's not enough. like any. Um, we don't feel responsible to go out and try twice as hard, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it happened. We've been doing what we're doing. And uh, if it goes up to number negative 12 on the chart, then... <laughs> past number Whatever, one. past number one to negative 12. That's no big deal, really. Okay, well, you both about this the conversation about exposure and pressure and... No, I'm sick. I'm sick. Well, you caught the English flu or something. Touch me, I'm sick. <laughs> you can fry a head on an egg on that forehead. You fry a head on that egg. That's right. Hey, you ain't got a forehead, you got an eight head. <laughs> <laughs> Magic eight ball head. We'll just turn, <laughs> turn it up and down. And <coughs> That's how we plan our destiny, was with that magic eight ball. You know, you turn it around. It says, try again. <laughs> Comes out and says yes, yes, <laughs> yes. no. <laughs> and go do you think, die. Do you think when you're gonna go back to the states? When you when are you gonna go back to America? Uh, About two weeks, December fifteenth. Uh huh. And then we go on tour for another five days. And then we have a month off. And we go to Australia, New Zealand, Hawaii, Japan, Hawaii, Hawaii, Southeast Asia. And then we're home for a little while. It's crazy because, like in France, you know, like nobody was, for example, where the problem comes from, where I come from. Nobody was really talking about you before, and then somebody's it's like, album of the year, you know, like, get it on TV, you know, it's like, all the magazines want a, a, a piece of the action. It's just that's why I'm saying I, I, I asked the first question. It, it goes really quick. It's very bandwagon esque. <laughs> if I may plug another band. That I totally love. <laughs> when you play, when you play the European countries, and I don't know if you talk to people, but if you watch the reactions away, but what has wh wh been the main difference between your American crowd and the European crowd? 
Mm. Probably the diets that the people... I don't know. I've sort of found that um, the language is sort of different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all this... People have the same reactions, you know what I mean? I guess we all came from a common ancestor, like... Uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, right. Creationist, Adam and Eve. Evolutionist, um, humanoid type creatures um, came out of Africa and populated the earth and um, adapted to their climates. But I think um, there's some, there's a, a million similarities and there are dissimilarities. And I think uh, <coughs> people's reaction to music is a very big similarity, <laughs> whether it be on the continent, be it the UK, or be in. Um, U.S. In the West, you know, if you go to the East or if you go to, like, uh, Cambodia or something, they wouldn't know what to think of you because they really haven't been exposed. But in the West, rock and roll has been a major cultural thing for the last 30 years. So it's pretty much the same reaction. It's also because your music seems to be uh, <sighs> based on instincts and then people can share that. Yeah, sure. It, it wouldn't matter if we were speaking in tongues. Um. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a on. universal language. It's a universal language, and that those are those are like worn out cliches, you know. Rock and roll is a universal language, brother. You know, but to some extent, that's true. I mean, it's people just you get a lot of people in the same room, you get good groove happening, and people really react. It's a great thing. I mean, something else. I don't know. Again, you tell me in America but in England or in France it's like quite recently that it's kind of cool to like rock again a lot of people kind of walked out of rock for a long time oh boy and they and they wore um, black clothes and you know it just if that's the case I mean I, I, music isn't a fashion accessory just a lot of people it is I know but to us it isn't you know I'm into uh, industrial um, dance now, you know. So what they do, they s they go to the pawn shop and sell all their CDs. <laughs> it's not records, but CDs. Because records are out. Is it may maybe it's also because guys like you maybe like give quite a good name to rock. Hmm. If rock and roll deserves a good name, it does. It does. And I think, yeah, probably you know, quite Bon Jovi gives love a bad name. <laughs> um, God gave rock and roll to God you. God gave rock and roll to you. You've got a gift. It's called rock, rock and roll. And rock and roll's paid for a lot of it's facelifts and hair transplants. Yeah. There's know. one thing that I've learned about rock and roll by being in this business for five or six years is, is it would be to use your illusion. One and two. It depends what the illusion it is. Life yeah. is full of illusion. <laughs> and here's it's my lovely magic. wife. It's magic. It's magic. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, uh, rock and roll is good. I have to admit it. It's got me through some rough times. Yeah, it's got a hard time. Rock and ever given me is a hearing mm -hmm. impairment. Did you hear the story that your wife, Shelly, said today about her About cousin? the girl? That little oh. girl, the girl, she's the total Check typical this out. girl. <sighs> What's that typical story? girl? It's, it's great. This 13-year-old cousin of, of Shelley's um, had, for a few, for the past couple of years, has had her walls covered in new kids on the block posters. And dolls. she heard our album, and she had dolls and everything, and she heard our album, never mind. And she tore all her posters down yeah, and burnt her dolls. N yeah. Really? You know Stacy. Stacy's like a little brat, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I now it's like I hate new kids on the block. And oh she's right. a terror. Yeah. She's a terror. And a, she's smoking a cigarettes. She's got a tattoo. Yeah. yeah, that's right. She just takes the car now. You know, she's Probably. not even old enough to drive. <laughs> <laughs> she's just a <laughs> zipping up and down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Driving just up and down, drunk, drink hurting again. people. This cop pulled her over. She just went, <laughs> smacked. Knocked She's him only out. She's thirteen. She's only thirteen. That's it's, right. It's, it's, it's never mind the attitude of a lot of people in in the U.S. to start with. Sure, sure. <laughs> I'm talking mind. about the word here. You know, like 
Yeah, it is. It is. It's too bad. It's too bad that's way. But see, people, um, they have to. Um, Use they illusion. make they make priorities, you know. And a lot of times, a priority is a car in your driveway, or the, you know, whatever material objects you have. And it's all a bunch of junk, and junk and trinkets and baubles. Trinkets, yeah. Look at this shiny stone, you know. Why is this any more? That's a Ming vase to me. I know. I this, could, this could be. I mean, Elizabeth Taylor should wear that on her finger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> Can I have a drink? Yeah. Without, make, without making any like sweeping statement, or we, you know, gen generalization, the people of your age, you, you're seeing them changing, because I don't know the, the youth of America. I don't know what's happening in the head. Kids are a lot smarter. It's a good no. record. Kids are a lot smarter. I'm totally convinced. The average eighteen-year-old is a lot smarter than they were when I was an eighteen-year-old. You think so? I'm convinced. In what I way? Wonder. What kind of smartness? Um, they're just more aware. They're more jaded and cynical. They're more aware of um, oh, injustice. They've learned from their parents' mistakes. American youth have had it all on a silver platter. They've been eating ice cream out of a bowl this big. But now that you know, bowl and then what is, is filled it? With crack. But now there's no such thing as Ferrell's <laughs> ice yeah, cream. Ferrell's is gone. Because now Ferrell's is a crack house. Dippy waiters and waitresses singing you happy birthday <coughs> off key. You ever had one of those zoos? A zoo? Oh, yeah. Did you ever have a zoo? Mm -mm. It was like 32 different kinds of ice cream or 16 or something like that. Oh, I thought of another idea for the video. Sea monkeys floating around in the video. Wouldn't that be neat? Wow. That's Brian a funny Shrek. one because, you know, when you talk about cynicism, I mean, this side of the water, being a cynic is not particularly a good thing. I mean, uh, it's the opposite. No, it's not, but it's, it's, it's a fine defense mechanism. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean that, that people are avoiding um, you know, necessary topics and, and things that really matter. It just means that they're aware of things. How many times do the people have to learn the same lesson? You know, well, not everything should be common sense anyway. Right. Instead of reactionaryism, nationalism. So e uh, that stuff's like easy. There's one band I want to talk about. Do you think a band like REM opened up the doors, the commercial doors, mm -hmm. uh, for a band like you to come in and have a commercial success? A little bit. I think every band that's kind of it just goes down the line. Cracked a little bit. Cracked the yeah. door open. Well, Whether it's Sonic Youth. Yeah, Sonic Youth. Jane's Addiction. They did it. I've always thought of of uh, I've always thought of REM as a commercial band in the first place. They just happen to be a good, passionate commercial band. And uh, there there have always been good, passionate bands in rock and roll throughout the history. It's just it's up to fans and people involved in the music industry to make sure that it doesn't get as, as stale and as bad as it has within the last 10 years. Especially in the Reagan era. Yeah. Did I roll that too tight? <laughs> Sorry. Looks like it. I think I yeah. did. No, yeah, because I mean, you know, tight. like from the, I don't know if the word is right, but from the traditional band, the affiliation of band that you're coming up with, you talk about, you know, the, s the youth, the Askadus, people like that. You're the first one to boot the door open. Yeah. It seems like the mainstream is very consistent. Consistent in like blandness. Being bland, like bland, boring TV shows. Bland, boring bands. Bland, boring blockbuster movies. <laughs> um, it's bad, all very bad, consistent. Bad, bad. When it comes know? to like mainstream and commercialism, it's sort of like no one's willing to take a chance because it's a risk of money. You know, that's, that's right. why you've had the same bunch of crap on right. MTV for the past six years or whatever, you that's know. That's right. It's I mean, it just comes down to money, and people aren't willing, you know, it's not a feasible see business move, you it know. It's, it's a vicious circle. It's actually, these people who are trying to make money, is they, they play it really safe, and they take, like, a demographic survey. So they survey all these papal, papal, the papal hierarchy in, in the Vatican. I mean, they... Um, survey all these people and say like what do you like what do you want to see and they've been fed garbage so that's all they know and they say we want more garbage so they give them the garbage they survey them again and it's all this garbage the next thing you know you have this over 
full landfill full of diapers and styrofoam. <laughs> and that's um, mainstream culture is a, a, a soiled pamper diaper in a, in a, a Big Mac container. <laughs> you're talking of, talking of Hollywood, for example, you know, like, because it costs so much money to make a movie, and it's a risk, like you're talking about commercial risk, what they do now, and they've been doing for quite a few years, is they buy successful French movies of the 50s and the 40s. They were blockbusters because they were well written. Do they colorize them? And then, no, they, they, re, they reshoot them, like oh, Freeman and the Baby and that kind of thing. Oh, you know, right. But that's oh. just the beginning. They bought, they're going out there and buying, like... Oh, yeah, that's exactly why there are so many new popular bands doing covers of songs even five years ago. You know, right. like this one band that we played with on Top of the Pops last night, we're doing a cover of a Christopher Cross song. Yikes. Yikey. You know? Crikey. Ooh. Yeah. What a chuff. <laughs> Yikes, what a chuff. <laughs> yeah. It's... It, it's I mean, how many times do you have to see the same I Love Lucy plot <laughs> on a sitcom, <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's good stuff uh, out there. I mean, The Simpsons, I mean, that's like a great, great TV show. And it's a very commercial success. Yeah, it is. It's, there's a lot of substance there. It's really good. <coughs> <coughs> and because, because I suppose, you know, the, the lines are, the walls are pretty thick out there, maybe thicker than here between, you know, between people. Is there already been people saying sell out to you because your your commercial it hasn't really happened to tell you the truth <coughs> you know because we're not really playing along i mean we're not go we're not at studio 54 with bianca jagger or cruising down hollywood boulevard with uh slash and uh mickey rourke you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's just not our scene really Pop, that's, you know, in, the in all the things I read about a band before I met you, it's like there's a word that comes back all the time, it's pop. And I think it's you, Kurt, is saying, um, before, at the end the run, during the bleach time and all that, I, I was scared of making pop music. Ooh, did I say that? Well, it was printed anyway. Well, it was printed, I see. Mm. Sounds like a misquote to no, me. No, I've always loved pop music. It just ha it just so happens that um, most of the songs that we wrote at the time the Bleach album was coming out were, were more abrasive songs. Um, there were quite a few songs that were very pop, like like the song like about a girl, that were just left off the album. In fact, a few very pop songs on this album were written at the time, if not before, the Bleach album came out. And I think that releasing the Sliver single was a good example of what <coughs> Nevermind would would have. So let, let's talk of, about <laughs> about pop because it's you know if you look, each person's got a definition I suppose England's got a completely different way of talking about pop as what you have or I have. So what's 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 pop? Pop is like um, rubber soul Beatles, just kind of a, a song with a hook, very simple. Yeah, and I think with repetition, it doesn't have to be clean and jangly. Yeah, uh, uh, there are a few Melvin songs that are pop in my eyes. And I think pop could be like children's songs, you know. Yeah, songs that you're taught in nursery school or whatever. It, yeah, it's not pop in, in as in popular. <laughs> That's not the case. But pop is also also something like in England. It certainly is the case. It's something that you kind of love to hate. Sometimes you know, there's pop songs that you really hate but you know they're just up there and mm. and you walk around with them and you know I think that's what pop is in England like a TV commercial that sticks in your head yeah. yeah didn't uh, Richard Carpenter do that at the Carpenters he saw um, a bank <laughs> commercial because I saw the Karen Carpenter story right. and uh, he was watching TV Pop and Quaaludes that his mom turned him on to. <laughs> Here, Richard. That's pop. They're Quaaludes. They'll calm <laughs> you down. So he's popping Quaaludes, sweating. Uh, and he saw this TV commercial for a bank. And the theme goes, We've only just begun. And he goes, That's a hit. So he got on the horn to Herb Alpert and buy the copyright to that song. And then they had a million seller hit. I wonder if he's still popping Ludes. <laughs> There's another word with P that's punk, yeah? That's another word I've seen a lot in your, in the English, British interviews I, I read of, of you. Or Ugh, whatever you've read. <laughs> whatever. 
There you go. I thought, yeah, let's talk about that first before we go any further. Talking about uh, whatever you read, like, there was an article in, in the Melody Maker. There was a, you know, front page article that presented you like real rock and roll monsters. Mm -hmm. Sensationalism is all it is, being yeah. sensational. Se you know, you can just read... Just another paragraph. You can just read, you can read the um, Sun, or you can read the Sunday Sport. <laughs> Just a bunch of sensational articles. Everybody likes to have a good time. Sometimes things get out of hand, but to, um, to have a whole image behind a band, you know. Um, they made a good article, I suppose. It was, it was funny. It was a good laugh. Ho, 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 ho. So, yeah, let's go back to punk then. Because the article, I think, you know, people were really read it, the other ones haven't, and it's forgotten. Yeah, punk. What, what, what do you use the word? That is a word that could, you know, is from a certain area of time and, and music. And you seem to put it, you know, you say it describes our music well. I think I think punk is just as vital now as it ever was. As far as like inspiring people, you can still look back on punk rock that came out in the early '80s and late '70s, and, and still be just as inspired and, and, and you know into it is, is it might have affected you when it was released right. when it was and, out and punk punk was like very simple and there was a lot of energy all the first real punk there was a lot of melody too and uh, it was a reaction to like stuffiness and like progressive jazz um, in rock and roll old farts playing 20 minute songs when what rock and roll was what was like a three minute song and it just really got you going you know go man go um you know i'm looking for kicks um emotional instead of like really cerebral like you know punk rock made me realize that you don't have to be professional you just have to have passion it inspired it can a lot be of as people to be as sloppy as you want and that's what made me start playing guitar. I was intimidated when I first started playing guitar by I was intimidated by um really professional musicians like like heavy metal musicians who are very anal and technical and you know promoted the fact that they can play good you know and that that made me not re ever think of playing rock and roll realistically or ever making a career out of it or actually you know going for it and doing it but uh, when i first when I heard punk rock, it made me realize that these people are a lot like me, you know. They're just as sloppy and as bad musicians, but they still like passion and they like energy. And so it, it helped me start a band. And hopefully it'll do the same for other kids and people. Professionalism is a really big thing in America, isn't it? More than here, I think. You know, you have to be... That's something that always strikes me. A lot of American artists, the emphasis is on you know, being very good at it and working your ha ass off at it. It's a very, you know, I don't, a very American thing, I think. Well, mm. it, it's, it's American. probably you true know, I don't everywhere. like to throw too well, much of that is yeah, American. Yeah. But no, but I, I understand mean, that. I mean, work, you know, work. In America, there's there's colleges devoted to, like, the Guitar Institute of Technology and the Percussion Institute of Technology, and they go and they Accordion teach Institute. you how to, like, make those moves on stage and how to look and what to wear right. and you know and the, the teach you to make you know, it. They have commercials. Get a career in the music industry, yeah. you know, managerial, uh sound engineering and they show these like total goofballs twirling these knobs and stuff. Like it's so romantic. <laughs> but in the same time you, you do you, you do get involved a lot in controlling Whatever comes out of the you have to. You have to do it because Cause it's, we don't it's, trust it's, it's, it's up to us three, and the, you let somebody else go get a hold of it, and uh, who knows how it's going to turn out. It's not going to be Nirvana. You've got to be stubborn, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a hard lesson learned, but it's the way it's got to be. <coughs> Get it? Yeah, definitely. But like on like on the video, like some some somebody was telling me, 
Is Alex telling me that you know you? I don't know if it's you or, or you three. Control it, like the the teen spirit. Oh yeah, we thought of the whole idea. Mm -hmm. We did hire a director, and um, at times we were at the mercy of the director, but hopefully we explained it to him well enough so he could get a good idea yeah. what we wanted. There was there were there are a lot of time constrictions for the for the video to be released so we only had a couple of days to edit it and uh we we mainly just let the the production company edit it and then we looked at the rough edits and decided to uh, to take a few things out but they had a really good idea of what we wanted we had a few discussions over it yeah so it turned out all right it's a nirvana video i mean if nirvana had anything to do with it you know, I could see some manufactured band. You know, they're take your places, guys. <laughs> no, I mean, it definitely works because I received the idea of it's like, you know, a process 20 videos a day. You know, like I receive them every day and listen to them. Yeah. Put them on, even looking at the label, looking at the name of the band. And, you know, I kind of watched it and then I stopped and I had <coughs> to play it again and it's just very, the, sp the spirit is there. And uh, even if you had the sound of force, you you would have to look at it again because it just looks completely different. Hmm. I know so the fans works. fans had a lot to do with it. People showed up yeah, there and they definitely. were s they were they weren't over enthusiastic. They were just very very enthusiastic. It was like twelve hours of sitting around listening to the same song. <laughs> That's you're still you're, you're living in Seattle, yeah. Around Seattle, yeah. Which is where where about exactly? Just south of Seattle. Dave lives in Seattle. I live in West. We, we live in Dave Seattle. just moved yeah. to Seattle. I don't have a home right now, but I think I'm going to move back to Olympia. I've lived in Olympia, which is the capital of Washington, for the past five years. And you were you from Aberdeen? Originally, but we've left Aberdeen about four years ago. We had to get out of there. It was just very stifling, stagnant, couldn't handle it anymore, a lot of backwards attitudes, just there was nowhere to go except out. Oh, is, that, is, that, is that Twin Peaks country? <sighs> Twin Peaks is classy, I don't know if Aberdeen is that classy. <laughs> Aberdeen is Twin Peaks without the excitement. Without the drama. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of twistedness there, but it's not very, I'll use the romantic again. It's not that interesting. It's kind of <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> and you, at, at least I know by you two coming out of, a, of art school um, training, or no, that's like going through art school. Not to be yes. That's just uh, we we got a bio from the record company. It was very stuffy and it was just very run of the mill. So we had a little fun with it. Started making up stories. Drinking coffee, getting giddy, writing down stuff. <laughs> and then we'll write this. And so that's how the art school thing came. Yeah, that's out. how art school thing. We thought, what is the most cliche, typical thing for a rock band? They're art school dropouts. Exactly. You know. Get it? And it wasn't even art school. It was craft school. You know, we were <coughs> painting seashells and gluing them on burlap or or. Grandma crafts, making little owl, owls out of uh, macrame, you know. <laughs> um, crafts, you know, that whole absurd world. Saying that, for example, the cover is a really good cover. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I think the cover has uh, the dollar bill shows what the uh, materialist connotations are about it, then anything after that is um, open for interpretation. <coughs> <coughs> Anti-materialist connotations, I must say. Uh, What's your, because I, I, when, I, when I read, you know, uh, I was looked at the dictionary at Nirvana to get some definitions of it, of the word. Because I was, it's one of those words that you know, but you're not very sure, exactly sure what it means. And uh, so what's, what's your definition of, of Nirvana? Well, the most common word that comes up in every definition that I've read has been freedom. 
so we, we kind of like to think of uh, our music as musical freedom in a way not being tied to a specific genre or a specific sound mm -hmm. amen that's really that's really good <laughs> and is there is there artists like can we stop